This terrarium is 1,830 days old. Its story illustrates the resiliency of life within a glass jar, but to truly grasp how that's occurred, we'll go back to the very beginning. This simple one gallon jar was a perfect vessel to house a mini forest floor ecosystem on a windowsill. I thought so at least. A foundational layer of gravel would serve as the false bottom, a layer where water could collect and sustain the system. However, it would have been useless without a permeable barrier, in this case, window screen. It allowed water to pass through while retaining the particles from the purifying charcoal layer and the substrate. I formulated a chunky blend of various components, ideal for tropical plants I'd been propagating for months before this, but plants alone wouldn't do. I created a hardscape from pieces of wood to mimic a rotting tree trunk. This framework accentuated the cotton candy fern, a maidenhair fern, alternanthra, an earth star, and cuttings of oak leaf creeping fig I planted within. Sprinkling leaves around this encapsulated the forest aesthetic, but I also wanted living ground coverage. Liverwort seemed like a good choice. Various twigs, seed pods, and other botanicals brought it together even more. However, none of it would work without the lifeblood of a terrarium, water. This water would not only sustain the system for the foreseeable future, but made it easy to clean the glass. Isopods, springtails, and millipedes would also call this home. Their job was simple, break down the botanicals and other organics to release nutrients into the substrate. All I had to do then was seal it up and allow life to unfold within the jar. Although I checked on it a month later, I wouldn't show it again for 303 days. That and the subsequent 368 day update were extremely brief. I wouldn't do or show anything significant for another 237 days. At a glance, it appeared worse for wares. However, one whiff gave me a better perspective. The smell of the forest floor quickly filled my nostrils, which proved this was an established and thriving ecosystem despite appearances. The issue was simple. It was dry because of something I did differently. Ferns appreciate better air circulation, so I excluded a gasket that would have sealed it off from the outside completely. It worked as desired, but I should have been more diligent about adding water. Moisture slowly leafing the system caused the liverwort and foliage elsewhere to perish, especially with the alternanthra which had one remaining stem. Ferns are temperamental, so I know this played a role in their development. However, I think their issue was primarily the side effect of acclimation die-off, because a lot of new leaves were present. They just had some growing in to do. Despite all of that, the cryptanthus grew taller, and the ficus gained hold of the forest floor. Undesirable algae and moss spores were forming on the glass as well. All of that could quickly be addressed with maintenance, though. With scissors and tweezers in hand, I meticulously combed through the delicate maidenhair fern to remove as much dead foliage as possible. I did the same everywhere else, but the other sections were easier to manage. Furthermore, I thinned out the ficus to avoid a complete takeover. I was left with a pile of trimmings that I could actually reuse. I chopped them up and studded the substrate to convert them into nutrients more effectively as they decompose. Now I actually serviced another terrarium just before this, leaving me with sphagnum moss and liverwort. Those were a perfect addition here, alongside some of the ficus trimmings. For whatever reason, I didn't mention anything about the cleanup crew at that time. However, as I review it all again today, I can at least confirm that the springtails were still alive and well. Anyway, I had to add more water to remedy the dryness. Like before this made it easy to clean the glass before sealing it up. Conservatively, I probably watered it two or three times since, but otherwise, I haven't done a thing in 1,225 days. From the outside looking in, it's clear the terrarium stood the test of time. The creeping fig has been hard at work, producing a vast network of roots within the false bottom where it can collect water to continue its ensnarement of the lands above. Ficus is robust, so it's not surprising to see this. However, the issue from three and a half years ago has persisted, and it hasn't been kind to the other plants. At one point, the moss was thriving. It was growing right up the glass until it was stopped in its tracks. Unfortunately, both the moss and the verwort perished. However, I could have been wiser about my selections from the start because other varieties are better suited for this. The crypt, on the other hand, is still alive and well, just not as vibrant as before, and many of the bottom leaves have dried up. That would have occurred in optimal conditions even as it grew, but not this quickly. 
The cotton candy fern made it as well. It's just much smaller than before, and likely in dire need of hydration. However, the maidenhair fern didn't make it. Or so I thought. Upon closer inspection, I discovered that a single frond remains. I should have watered this a few times a year, but I didn't. Hindsight won't change the fact that it would be doing much better if I had. That's why some of these plants look the way they do, and likely why my cleanup crew is MIA. A gasket would solve this issue, but present others instead. I simply need to water more frequently. A few giveaways indicate this is a healthy, established environment, regardless. For example, the botanicals have degraded and are now fully integrated into the substrate. An excellent sign of stability is also present on the driftwood, fungus colonies. One whiff of the inside and I can confirm that it still smells like the forest, which as you know is an excellent indicator of its health. Now that it's open, we might as well engage phase one of the comeback, maintenance. My sights immediately went to the maidenhair fern and I got to work. I had to be extremely careful while trimming off the dead sections as not to disturb the remaining frond. Even though this is all that remains, I'm hopeful it'll return to its former glory. The ficus was even more out of hand than I initially thought. There was so much to comb through and I hardly made a dent even after all these trimmings. Unfortunately, I damaged the crypt while removing a vine, but it wasn't really my fault. The bottom half was completely dead. It's not really a big deal though, because even without this portion, the plant will root and continue growing as before. Although sparse, I think it's still looking good. I just have to address all that gunk on the glass. Nothing a cotton ball and water won't solve. I can only speak for myself, but seeing years of buildup disappear in seconds is so satisfying. Additionally, I used this to push the old moss down into the substrate. With that, the stage was set for the plants. I situated the top of the crypt before adding some new ferns. I tried to be mindful of the maidenhair fern, but that's not quite how it panned out. I wasn't paying close enough attention and nearly destroyed it. Thankfully, it still stood tall. I really like this curly fern, and it seemed like a suitable replacement for the Alternanthera. The maintenance left me with a slew of free leaf litter, perfect for reintroduction. I chopped it up as before and sprinkled it in the back. I also have new leaves, but I won't add them until after placing the moss. Haircat moss should be better at withstanding dry out periods than the previous selection. Now this is what the terrarium was missing. In my opinion, moss is the true embodiment of the forest floor. Leaf litter helps too. These tiny leaves contrast so well with the textures of the various plants. I figured while I'm at it, I might as well add to the ficus carpet as well. That all looks good on the front end, but more water is what was needed from the start. You know, it's funny. I enjoy these terrariums when I build them, but the edits that occur during maintenance always make me like them more. It was also fun to revisit and discuss something initially done in the ASMR format. Luckily I set a good foundation back then, but my style has developed significantly in the five years since. Now the aesthetic among the foreground elements is impeccable, moss, leaf litter, and plants working harmoniously to create something beautiful. Something that I feel genuinely represents the forests it was inspired by. For the time being, I didn't find it necessary to bolster the cleanup crew colony. It probably makes sense to see how it develops with the edits and improved water schedule first. I'll be honest, I don't closely observe my terrariums often, so I doubt I'll do it more frequently without help. A simple calendar reminder should keep me in check. Until then, I look forward to seeing how this forest develops and continues to show how incredibly resilient life can be even when contained within a jar.